Good day, my name is Blue Suit, and today I'll be going over my review of the indie early access psychological survival horror based roguelite deck builder known as Draft of Darkness. In Draft of Darkness, you choose from one of a few lone survivors as you make your way through grid based hallways and corridors filled with friends, enemies, and interactables as you attempt to fight off the darkness and the weirdnesses it spawns with your limited resources and ever growing deck of useful abilities. The story in Draft of Darkness uses codex entries and small NPC side quests to chronicle the fall of civilization as planet-wide government literally plucked the soul from humanity, causing the scarce few remaining normal humans to turn to whatever means of survival they could get their hands on. These NPC dialogues and codex entries aren't particularly well paced, and sometimes you'll find yourself presented with walls of text at a time, but I was surprised how interested I was once I really started learning that there is an actual backstory here. When the game begins, it really seems too simple to be interesting. The fights are slow, the exploration is a slog, and the early game is devoid of any plot. It's not until you start to meet some of the characters and read some of those walls of text does the story start to pay off. Overall, I do really enjoy the dark and unique storyline, and it does a great job of investing players where some of its simpler mechanics fail to do so. The simplest of all is in Draft of Darkness's level design. With grid-based movement around procedurally generated maps, you navigate your character around a very stale, polygonal map, picking up items, interacting with objects and NPCs, and of course, fighting enemies. All the while, you'll be on the lookout for the stairs leading up to the next level, which will be guarded by a boss of some sort. There is a lighting mechanic in play that seems a little underdeveloped in this stage in early access that will allow you to see further on your map if you light some matches or use a flare, but doesn't seem to have very many meaningful interactions as of right now. There are, however, some really redeeming things about the game's exploration, and the first is the sound design of these levels. Each one has its own creepy synthwave tracks and ambient sounds that really make the levels feel heavy and dreadful in the best kind of atmospheric way that are very reminiscent of retro horror games. The second thing that I really enjoyed from these maps is kind of rare. It only happened to me once, but I was attacked out of nowhere while in a menu by a random demonic super boss that was three times my level and followed none of the established rules of combat. It came just as I started to feel comfortable in the game, and it was a joyous kick in the pants that reminded me why Draft of Darkness is in fact a horror game. Its combat for now does feel a little on the simple side. There's plenty going on, but considering how many roguelike deck builders there are on Steam nowadays, I'm definitely looking forward to Draft of Darkness adding some more depth in the coming month of its early access. When you start a run, you'll have the option to choose from one of three characters if you have them unlocked. Combat begins as a standard turn-based battle where you use your action points and resources to defeat your foes. These resources are precious and somewhat scarce, so you'll need to alternate often between firing your weapons and using melee to conserve ammo and energy. The early levels are quite easy, but as you progress through the maps, you can find extra party members to join your quests who will have decks of their own based on their class. Right now, there's Jake who uses flashlights and pistols, Kara who uses knives and hypodermic needles, and Pavel who uses shotguns and axes. While on a run, the party members that you can find are essentially carbon copies of these three characters. The actual deck building in Draft of Darkness is, however, already pretty impressive. Characters can equip cards based on their equipable weapons, and they have to have that weapon type equipped to be able to utilize those specific cards. One of the most interesting to me was Jake's light-based attacks. Armed with a flashlight, Jake can use its power to apply status effects or deal direct light damage to enemies. Most cards and status effects felt very unique and already offered lots of different ways to build your characters. Additionally, combat is where Draft of Darkness really shows off its fun art style, as you can see all the strange and gory creatures of the darkness in all their splendor. Draft of Darkness as a roguelite really starts to take off when you have your first death. The whole first run, I really wasn't sure about this game, because it's so slow. But once you die for the first time, all these other mechanics are introduced that make it so much more addicting. For starters, there's a storyboard flowchart that pieces together all of the NPC interactions so you can keep track of their side quests, a few of which grant you additional heroes to start the game with. Secondly, depending on the success of your run, you can purchase booster packs with earned credits in between runs. Each pack represents a particular weapon type, and each weapon's booster pack can be purchased up to 20 times, and they're unlocked permanently. So as you're completing or failing runs, you can decide which weapon you want to get better with, and then purchase and build decks based on that. And the last thing that's really better on your second run and beyond is just your general knowledge of the game. When you first start out, there are loads of unexplained mechanics and stats, and you really have no idea what you're doing, compared to later on when you can start actually experimenting with builds and leveling up your characters in a certain way. 
You can pick up Draft of Darkness right now in early access on Steam for $10. It's a dark and creepy survival roguelike deck builder that really grew on me after my first few hours with the game. It's definitely an early access title though, as a few of its systems either need more content or just feel a touch underdeveloped. On top of that, its entire second act won't be introduced until later on in early access, so there's really probably only about a dozen hours or so between completing part one and filling out your decks. That being said, it still outshines its current price tag with its unique story and style with some addicting roguelite elements, so I'm valuing Draft of Darkness at $12 in its current state, and I'm excited to see what kind of development we see from indie studio Crawly Games. I hope you enjoyed this review of Draft of Darkness. Come see me on Twitch where you can watch our reviews in progress five nights a week. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Until next time, peace!